Hi, I'm Bill Silek. I'm going to walk you through the NCTM strand measurement. NCTM has five strands. Measurement is the fourth one. Within that strand, there are two standards. The first standard is basically understanding what measurement is, and the second standard is measuring, doing things that involve measurement. So let's take a look at our first one, understanding measurement and different attributes of measurement. The first big thing is being able to compare two objects, two items, two people. Students naturally do this on their own, so as a teacher, all we really need to do is encourage comparing people, comparing measurement of people. Mike on the right is a little bit taller than Greg. We not only have to compare people, we can compare different objects, students can move them side by side to compare the length, and we don't have to know how much bigger, but just this object is bigger, longer, taller, than that object. We don't have to deal with numbers. It can be just, this is bigger, this is smaller. This handful is bigger than that handful. The handful of manipulatives in my hand is a little compared to that box. So it can be relative. Here is some uh, attributes you can use, just some great measurement vocabulary. You can see as a teacher, it's pretty simple to insert measurement attributes in sentences. So instead of saying, that's a hole, that's a deep hole, that's a big hole, that's a shallow hole. Instead of saying, put away the toys, clean up, let's go, be more specific. Add a measurable attribute. Say, put the toys in the small box, in the big box. If they're jumping rope, they're going to notice if one rope's bigger than the other, so make that a teaching moment teach them about measurable attributes. That rope sure is long. If students are playing in the sand, if you guys still have sand at your school, ask them questions about it that involve measurement. Not just, oh, I see you're scooping, that's cool, but how many scoops do you think it's gonna take to fill that bucket? So not only do they have to figure out how many scoops, but they have to look at the volume of the bucket and try and make an estimate, an educated guess about the volume of that bucket that they have. What this really comes down to is relationships, this compared to that. So it's not necessarily just, you know, new computer, old computer, like in the photo. It's more about this person is taller than that person. This shoe is longer than that shoe. And that's, that's really what we're getting at in the primary um, standard about understanding measurable attributes. So we can start bringing in standard units of measurement, like a ruler or yardstick in this case. And it can be as simple as just, let's stack up some blocks next to that yardstick. Students don't need to understand what the yardstick means. They don't need to know what the inch is at this point. Um, but it, it's giving them that comparison. In fact, don't just stop with blocks. Put measurement tools next to everything. If they're used to writing, so measure the pencil. And it doesn't have to be this is four inches. It can be it's this long. It goes this far. That one goes that far. This one's bigger than that one. Again, we're just working on comparisons. In fact, just take whatever measurement tools you have and put them out there for students. Um, I'd recommend avoiding the sharp ones. But again, this is laying a foundation. This is getting students comfortable with measurement tools so that by the time they get into upper grades, they don't look at a protractor and they think, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do with this? They think, oh, no problem. I've been doing this since preschool. So whenever you can, make one of your centers or just add it to you know, one of the play centers, all sorts of measurement tools, and it will make a difference. So here's some vocabulary for you. Iteration is when you measure something end to end. In this case, it's with a non-standard unit of measure. You could do this with one inch lengths of something, but um, for the most part, it's just when you measure an object end to end, it's typically non-standard because paper clips are not standard length. It's not enough just to say measure how long your shoe is in paper clips. You need to teach them what end to end means. You need to give them the strategies about straight lines, when one ends, here's how this goes. This one comes right next to it. Students don't know that. Even up until second grade, they really don't grasp this and you need to model it and double check this 
often. As you're teaching them about measuring, make it fun. Start off with items they are used to that are um, easily recognizable. Save some milk cartons and use those to measure. How tall are you? Have the students lay down and measure them in milk cartons. It's really not until you get to about second grade that students need to understand what unit of measurement is appropriate. So if you're talking about height, a second grader needs to know we don't measure humans in miles because then we'd be all pretty much the same height. We measure in feet and inches. We don't measure humans in millimeters. That would get kind of ridiculous. Uh, so second graders need to know that, but anything before second grade, don't worry about labeling here's how long it is and here's what unit is appropriate for this purpose. So that's our first standard. That's what they need to know and what they need to understand about measuring. Let's look at our second one, actually measuring some stuff. So this would be an iteration, taking a look at those paper clips and measuring how long a microphone is. Just have them measure stuff around the classroom. Again, feel free to make it non-unit standards of measurement. Make it something they're used to. Make it something that they're comfortable with. So here's something slightly different, taking the a same yardstick and measuring it over and over and over. So how long is our room? Maybe you have them estimate it first, and then let's measure our classroom. And teaching students how to move one yardstick throughout. We're not going to go by 10 or 20 yardsticks to measure a classroom. We would use just one. We can use really anything to measure any sort of tool, it doesn't have to be um, a tool from a garage, any measurement tool, whatever is appropriate. You can use measuring tape, use a yardstick, use a ruler. You can figure out how long a piece of paper is and measure in papers. Just a variety of tools to figure it out. So you ready to play the playground ball estimator? Ba -ba -da -ba. Here's how it works. You can do this in real life. I'll try and create it for you here in a slide. How far do you think this ball is going to roll? Is it going to roll all the way down and, and hit Diego? He's standing just out of the picture. Do you have your estimate? All right, think about how far this ball is going to go when I move the rock. Here we go. So we had to measure, we had to make an estimate, and in our head estimate how far that ball is going to roll. We didn't have to physically measure something, but we made an estimate about how far it was going to be. That's a fantastic lesson. Students love that. You can roll all sorts of stuff down a slide and work on your estimation skills with measurement. So those are our two standards. They're pretty straightforward. Um, understanding what measurement is and measuring stuff. So hope you enjoy the measurement strand.